Good afternoon, everybody. Chris Bartell here, Director of Marketing for the Cascade Pacific Council. Thanks so much for joining us today on our Wednesday webinar. Super, super excited about today's webinar, something we should all be thinking about at the beginning of the year, emergency preparedness. Okay, just really, really quick, quickly here, a few of the latest news items that I just wanted you to know about. We have our uh, roundtable and camp for all kickoff is tomorrow night at 630. You'll actually receive uh, a, a link to that in email, or you can check out our Facebook page and go to the events and you can register there. Also, there's a candy sale webinar on January 19th. So you'll want to sign up for that for our spring fundraiser. And a couple other things here, just a couple quick deadlines. I just want to run these through here. January 15th, we have our eagle Eagle Scout scholarship applications are due January 16th and 17th. We have an American Labor Merit Badge virtual event, actually a whole bunch of virtual events you see here. Uh, January 30th, the Order the Arrow members, for those of you who are in the OA, we have a seminar as well. January 31st, there's a short-term camp administrator national camping school. It's an all-day event. And for those of you who want to host larger, uh, like camperie-sized events, it's really good information to have and, and things to learn there. So February 20th and 21st, we have our Aviation Merit Badge virtual event. And then March 12th through 14th, there's a Sustainability Merit Badge event. And then for those of you who want to join Powderhorn Training, actually registration is now open for that. So you can actually see these on our calendar on the cpcbsa.org website or on the Facebook event. So check that out. And let's see here. Next up, we have a couple things just for the, <laughs> I have a couple teenagers and they're looking for jobs. So camp staff is the way to go. So we actually have openings that is actually, you can apply today. So tell the teenagers, you know, if they're looking for a gig this summer to check out camp staff, it's really pretty amazing. So you can go to cpcbsa.org slash camp staff for that. And, um, and you can, again, see all these on our, on our Facebook page for the events and on our calendar as well. Okay, we're going to dive into this. This is going to be really great. Melissa Miller is going to show us some tips and tricks about emergency preparedness. Awesome topic for the beginning of this year. She is a uh, pretty astute at such things. She's not only our camp director at Butte Creek Scout Ranch, but she is a cub master at PAC 554. She is also the membership chair of Troop 554, and she is an OA Brotherhood member, and she is an EMT CERT member at the Vancouver Fire Department. So she knows her stuff when it comes to emergency preparedness. She actually taught at University of Scouting as well. And what she's going to do is we've got a, a few videos here. She's going to guide us through some really great emergency preparedness tips. And really our first one here is about creating a personal emergency kit. Now, also what you're going to see is there's going to be a whole bunch of tips at the end of this. She also has created a fantastic document and that will be on our blog. We'll post that and you can download that. It is, it is really fantastic. So first of all, let's dive into our personal emergency kits. All right. Hi guys. Um, so we're going to talk about emergency preparedness. Um, the very first thing that you should, uh, that you should have is what's called a go bag. Um, a go bag goes into a regular size backpack um, and it is your basic necessities that you will need for um, about 72 hours. So um, I have examples of an adult go bag and a child's go bag. Um, some things uh, that are really important is you're going to need to make sure that you have food for 72 hours. Uh, you're going to need to have enough water um, or a way to purify your water, okay? Uh, because we don't know if we're going to have tap water available. So um, you want to make sure you have toiletries, um, any uh, medication that you take on a regular basis, um, a first aid kit, and, um, you know, and a full change of clothes. So that includes your socks, your underwear, your undergarments of any kind, um, you know, a shirt, bottoms, and shoes. Um, because it may be in the middle of the night and you have to rush out super fast. Um, so we'll go over some of these items that we have. The first thing we'll talk about is food, right? So we have some mountain house meals. Um, we take them out of the bags because that takes up too much space in your backpack. You want to make sure that um, you can get things as small as possible so you, you can fit more in. Um, so we have taken those off and I've written on there uh, how much water it needs um, to cook that meal. Um, the other thing I have are protein shakes and protein bars. 
Um, so those are also a meal replacement as well as these small snack size um, cans of tuna. Um, always make sure that you have a way to purify your water um, because you're not gonna be able to carry all the water that you need for 72 hours, right? So uh, make sure that you have like a life straw available. Um, any medication that you need to take on a regular basis um, or anything that you might need, um, such as Tums or Advil, Tylenol, that kind of stuff, uh, make sure that you pack that. Um, all your toiletries, um, anything that you can possibly think of, uh, make sure that you think of um, having a way to cancel out noise, right? Because it may be kind of hectic and scary for the kids. Um, so earplugs are really good to have. Um, and um, hand sanitizer, that kind of stuff. Uh, first aid is really important. So I just have a regular first aid kit that I bought at the store for the bandages. Um, also, I have uh, some gloves and some pads. Um, pads are not only used for female purposes, they are very, very good for, um, for soaking up a lot of blood. So if somebody got hurt, it's super absorbent, so, um, so you don't have to worry about a lot of mess. Um, we also have flushable wipes. Um, they are also biodegradable. So as um, well if as it came to, you know, you needed to dig a hole to use the restroom, um, you have those. Uh, we also have shoes and a change of clothes. Your change of clothes, of course, is everything from socks, um, underwear, any other undergarments for females, um, shirt, pants, the whole nine yards. Um, also make sure that you have some kind of a blanket, something like that. It's getting cold out. We want to make sure um, not only for adults to keep warm, of course, but, um, but for kids, sometimes it's a comfort thing, okay? Um, the kids, you can see that it looks a lot different um, than the adults. The adults uh, are not as fun, right? Because we want to make sure that the kids have stuff to keep busy. Um, so we have coloring books and, and story books, a stuffed animal, um, again, a blanket that, um, that maybe makes them feel safe. Um, they'll have glow sticks. Um, they like to use them for night lights, right? Because it could be kind of scary at night. Um, an emergency poncho. Um, again, if there's any antibiotic cream, anything like that that you want them to have, and then a small first aid kit. Um, any medication that they would take um, or anything that you would like them to have. They also have food as well. Um, and because you want to make sure that everybody carries their own, right? So everybody, everybody's pack should have 72 hours of food and water. Um, also, they have flashlights and compass and a way to start a fire, um, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, we also have an emergency blanket as well because, again, it's getting super cold out. We want to make sure that, um, that our kids stay really warm. Um, so this is what your kit should look like. Um, and of course, please feel free if you have room to add anything to it that you think you might need. Awesome. Thank you. We've got another video from here in just a moment, but wanted to cover just a couple of quick little takeaways here uh, that, that I found were interesting anyway. Having number one, a 72 hour supply is really important. Food and weather appropriate clothing, of course. I love being in the Pacific Northwest, right? Always have rain gear, uh, extra shoes, first aid and medications for every specific person. Now I know a lot of the scouts, we know these kinds of things inherently, but for your go bag, this is really important. I think to think about earplugs. I th didn't even think about earplugs, but a great, great idea, especially if things are stressful and, and whatnot, things to just calm down, especially kids. So having activity books for kids was also just a great, great, great idea. So thank you, Melissa, for that. So Melissa is going to tell us a little bit more about disaster disaster kits, again, more than the bare necessities here. So what would you actually put into a, a, a larger family oriented disaster kit or something uh, that would maybe be for the community? Let's check it out. Now this kit is more of a disaster preparedness kit. Um, so this not only is for, um, for myself, but if I was gonna help other people, okay? 
Um, the other thing that you have to think of in a disaster situation is that um, you're probably going to be in a neighborhood or in an area where there's a lot of businesses. Um, in those situations, uh, remember that you have every household item available to you to use. Um, so this is just kind of the stuff that you are going to take with you um, to have on hand. That's kind of important to have. Um, you should be able to find blankets and, um, and those kinds of things uh, in houses that you're going to. Um, so what we have here, of course, is we have flushable wipes because we need to make sure uh, that we have a way to take care of ourselves when we're using the bathroom. Um, again, you may have to dig a hole and use that. Um, another thing you can do is uh, the two bucket system. So the two bucket system, you're gonna get the uh, five gallon jugs. Home Depot or Lowe's buckets work really well. Um, you'll put, if you have cat litter, dirt, sand, whatever, in one of them that you are going to be using for uh, bowel movements. Um, and then you'll have a separate bucket that you would use for uh, urination. Um, that way they don't mix <laughs> uh, and you can cap them. Um, the other thing is your um, uh, purification tablets uh, for your water. So um, you always wanna try and use a two step purification process if you can. Um, so boiling water at a rolling boil for 10 minutes is a really good one. Um, if you don't have that available, um, you can use bleach. Uh, just know that with bleach, you wanna make sure that it's the disinfecting bleach, not the scented bleach or the non-spill bleach um, because those will make you very sick. Um, but you can use these tablets. Um, tablets and boiling water is probably gonna be your best bet. If the water doesn't look very good, it's kind of mucky, um, you can uh, use a bandana um, pour the water through a bandana to kind of filter out all the all the nasty stuff. It'll make the water look a little better. Um, but if we've all been to camp, we know what well water looks like <laughs> and, and we still drink it. So um, you want to make sure that you have rain gear if it's that type of season, right? Right now, obviously, we want to make sure that we have that. Um, paracord, you can never, ever have enough paracord. Um, you can use it to, uh, for several different things, right? If you need to, um, maybe somebody fell down somewhere that you can't reach them, this is a great way uh, to reach them. It's also a great way to um, create kind of your own um, carrying device if you need to for somebody. It's also a great thing to have if you need to use a, a tourniquet, right? Um, make sure that you have something to keep you sustained. So protein bars, um, something like that. I always make sure that I have gum in my pack because when I'm talking to people, um, a lot of times people don't think this, uh, think about this stuff, right? But if you're talking to somebody, um, you don't want to have nasty breath, <laughs> right? Um, so always have a way to, to kind of keep your breath fresh. Um, CPR mask uh, is always handy um, if you choose to do CPR um, and want to do the mouth to mouth. You do not have to do mouth to mouth. Uh, chest compressions are just fine. Um, duct tape, you, there are so many things that you can use duct tape for. Uh, we wanna make sure that we have that with us um, for everything. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times you're gonna need duct tape and, <laughs> um, and you won't have it. So please make sure you have that in your bag. Uh, a sharpening stone very important. Um, you're probably going to be cutting, um, if you're helping people, probably going to be cutting a lot of clothing, um, that kind of stuff. You may have to cut up tarps, you may have to cut up uh, sheets, that kind of stuff, right? So you want to make sure that you can keep a sharp knife. Um, so these are campfire starters or signal flares. Um, I don't want to pick it up because I don't want to have it be noisy, but, um, but you always want a real quick way that you can start a fire um, especially if you are not handy with uh, <laughs> uh, flint and steel, right? Um, I have matches in here and a little pocket knife. Um, again, you're going to need to cut things. You want to make sure um, that you have something accessible to do that. Always have something to write on and something to write with. Um, 
flashlight is very important to have, a way to charge your electrical device, whether it's in a vehicle um, or whatever, make sure that you have that handy. So have a USB and a plug-in available. Um, not that you're gonna be able to have cell service in a disaster situation, um, but you can still use your device to keep notes, to have contact numbers, uh, that kind of stuff if you can get to a landline. Um, make sure that you have a reference guide of some kind. Um, and this is very important because it'll tell you, um, let's say there was a, an, an accident with a tanker truck, right? And you need to know what's in that um, because you want to make sure that you keep people safe. Um, so having something like that is very valuable so you know what to do in different kinds of situations. Um, it's a really good reference point. Earplugs, again, is very useful um, if you run across kids um, or yourself because you're going to have, um, if it's a disaster situation, a lot of screaming, a lot of um, chaos. So you want to make sure that you can focus and do what you need to do. So that's a really good thing to have. Um, again, make sure that you have your basic necessities. Um, if you're going to be eating packaged uh, emergency supply food, make sure that you have like some Metamucil or Miralax or something like that because um, they have a lot of protein, not a lot of fiber. <laughs> so you want to be able um, to keep things moving because if you don't feel good, you can't help other people. Um, other things that you might think about having, um, if it's summertime, have your sunscreen or bug spray, um, that kind of stuff in here. Always make sure that you have a way to turn off your gas and your water. Um, and I will uh, show you where that's at um, so that you know how to turn it off. All right, guys. So um, we, I'm going to show you how to turn off your gas uh, from the outside of your house. This is very important because if there is anything like an earthquake, um, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your gas is shut off. Um, you'd hate for the fireplace or the stove or anything that you have hooked up to the gas to leak. Um, and then if you're trying to keep warm in the house um, and you light candles because it's dark, um, you don't want any explosion to happen. So we want to make sure we shut the gas off first thing. Um, so make sure you have a tool. Uh, make sure that it's not um, metal. Don't use a wrench on this because if you create a spark, um, that's very bad around gas, right? So um, so something that's not going to create a spark would be great. Um, they sell these tools uh, at geez, like Winco and that kind of stuff. So um, they're very super lightweight, um, not heavy like metal, okay? Um, so make sure there's usually going to be something on here that will tell you gas. Um, here's your water. So it has a little niche for your water so that you could use it to turn, right? This is a newer um, gas meter. So um, it's very clear. It is covered with red, right? It's painted in red so you know exactly where the shutoff is. Um, the older meters can have the shutoff more up here. Um, kind of in the middle. It just depends on uh, which kind of meter you have. So make sure that you know where your shutoff is. Um, so you're going to take the tool that says gas. It's going to have this little slit here and you're going to put that right over the gas. Okay. Put your tool on and then turn. Um, you want to make sure that straight up and down is on and side to side is off. So you can line up the holes. Um, I know the older ones, uh, the older gas meters do not have the lineup of the holes. So just make sure that you turn it side to side um, to show that it's off. Awesome, those are some really, boy, really, really great tips. I really appreciate that. So here's some key takeaways. And then we'll go over, I mentioned in the chat, uh, what do you put into your kit? So we'll share that because I think it's really great for others to hear it, especially since we're gonna do an audio version of this as well. People can hear some other tips as well. So a couple of things that, that Melissa had mentioned, and thank you so much, Melissa, for doing this with us. And, and uh, some of the key takeaways were really, you don't need regular household items. I thought that was interesting because in your main disaster kit, because those will be available. Um, but also the great tip was 
separate potty buckets. I thought that was brilliant. And having kitty litter. I don't have a cat, but uh, probably a good idea to have kitty litter around, right? So water purification, of course, as we scouts know, always having that available. And this was interesting too, not using the and having around that scented bleach that you just have to have the disinfecting bleach. I thought that was a super, super great, great point. And rain gear, of course, always we mention that paracord duct tape. And uh, one thing you can do actually, if you have an algae bottle is wrapped up duct tape around your Nalgene bottle. Always great to have, especially for backpacking, camping, any kind, any kind of activities like that where you're carrying around your Nalgene bottle. So, and fire starters, of course, and always being prepared that there may not be cell service. I think that was, that was actually super, super important as, as well. So let me go through here. Let me just check out the chat here and we'll see what other what other ideas people had here. This is really some really great ideas here. I, I was looking and I'm gonna share because people on Facebook won't see these and I'll vice versa. So let me roll through here. Hand sanitizer, knife, first aid kit, of course, hard candy. I thought that was an inter interesting one as well. And can keep kids busy too with a little hard candy. Flashlight, of course, sunscreen. A lot of these are the basics. A hammock, hammock is an interesting idea as well. Extra batteries, of course, compass, hat. Uh, an emergency whistle, right? Some of these 10 essentials, always super important to have in your in your go bags as well. And we actually have a full list. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, there will be a, she, uh, Melissa has created this awesome, fantastic, all encompassing uh, a list of, of items and how to's and a whole guidebook. It's really fantastic. It's more than 50 pages. So there's some really great stuff there. So let's see what else have people said? Uh, somebody mentioned a walking stick. Yeah, great idea. And let's see shovel. Obviously, uh, yes, that's very important. Very important. Uh, some uh, bug spray, electrolyte tablets, chapstick, crowbar is interesting too. That's a good one to have in your disaster kit as well. I, I actually have not seen the tool that Melissa had shared because I have an old house. And, and so that was a great um, tool. She mentioned you can get it at Home Depot or Winco, any of those kinds of places. Of course, lots of rope, paracord, fantastic. Can't ever have enough of that. And let's see, somebody mentioned a mirror, signal mirror, emergency radio, Yes, dog and cat food. We're going to go through a couple of these other things as well. A tarp. Yep, that would be awesome. And somebody actually mentioned, because there are some people from other outside of our council here, it really depends on where you live as well. So being prepared with, you know, really items, especially here and the weather. So sort of rotating in and out. This is something Melissa had mentioned to me was really rotating in and out, uh, you know, what you need based on based on the actual, you know, the weather at the time and your the temperature outside and, and all of that. So Give me one second here. We're going to, let me share my screen one more time here and we will get back into some more of this here because she had some really, really great tips here. So hold on one second. Let's make sure this is, this is going here. Great. Should be able to see that hopefully here. Let me do that one more time just to make sure. Great. Here we are. Little green outline isn't showing up on my on my Zoom, so we'll hope you're all able to to see this. And let's see what other what other, let me check on Facebook real quick here. Um, yeah, lots of great great tips. I mean, tarps and and ground cloths always really a great great idea. There's a couple of steps that I think that Melissa actually mentions in her in her program is the the number one thing is really having a family plan. I think this is a a super super great point is. And these are some steps you can take. So let's really think about this. This is a great opportunity, actually, at the beginning of the year to really think through this and get your, if you have kids, kids at the house or family around, and especially extended family, really preparing for this. This is really important, I think. So number one is because your family safety is number one, where will you meet your family members if there's a disaster that happens? Is there a location outside the house? Where will you meet in the neighborhood or... Uh, knowing where you might meet up if you are uh, split up like here in Portland where we have the rivers having locations where you will meet or plan on meeting if you can't get across the river or a timeline and so uh, one key to figure that out or to get in contact with one another is this is a great tip tip number two is identify an out-of-state check-in contact because if there was a disaster 
Sometimes the local cell lot towers may be down, things like that, but you may be able to use an emergency line to reach outside of the area. And so you may want to have a family in the Midwest or the East Coast that your family members would contact and that person would be the liaison for communication. So if you are on one side of the river, your family's on the other side of the river, you would call out to your friends or family in New York, let's just say, and they would be a liaison. So you could say, hey, Billy is over here and Sally's over here. We're all safe. We're all okay. We're trying to get across the river to meet back at the house, that kind of thing. And really, this is another one here. Number three is plan for all possibilities, extended stays, sheltering in place or evacuations. We're all familiar with sheltering in place, aren't we these days? Number four is how will you escape buildings where you spend time? Home, workplace, school. We're not at school a lot these days, of course, or, or even at our workplaces in some cases, but being prepared for your location, where you may be, where you spend a lot of time is really, really important. Number five, what route and several alternatives will you use to evacuate? And do you have transportation? You know, these days we talk a lot about electric cars. Maybe one electric car is a great idea, but maybe not so much if you have to get further away and you can't plug in. So, so just something, food for thought, having a, having a car always full of half tank of gas is probably a, a great idea. Let's see, the next, next step here is creating a family disaster plan. And this, I, I love these tips. These were really, really uh, fantastic is contact your local emergency management office and your local chapter of the American Red Cross. And because they have some great, great tools as well, meet with your family, plan on how your family will stay in contact if separated by a disaster. And she has these great tips. Here are some steps. So you actually post the emergency telephone numbers on every phone on actually the device and you can also, if you have little kids, especially, and they carry backpacks around and things like that, have a laminated piece of paper that has emergency contact numbers, especially that contact number that's outside of the area can be super, super important. Show responsible family members how and when to shut off the water, gas, and electricity at the main switch. We saw that with Melissa showing us with the tool there. Especially if teenagers can learn how to do this, anybody who's an older, uh, an older child can learn how to do this in the house. Super, super important. And of course, installing smoke alarms on each level of the house. Of course, super, super important. And as a matter of fact, the beginning of the year, right? So we should all be checking those smoke alarms too. And contacting last, uh, let's see, number five here is actually contacting your local fire department to learn about home fire hazards. A great, great tip as well. And knowing some of the hazards in the area, some potential hazards and meeting with your neighbors. Getting your neighbors on a, on a plan of attack is, is really, I think, really, really important. Getting to know your neighbors and actually seeing if neighbors are prepared as well. This is a great opportunity and shoot, you can do this all virtually these days, right? Everybody's used to doing Zoom. So walking through that with your neighbors is a fantastic, fantastic idea. Here's another tip. Uh, we all know this, water is life. Now, one of Melissa's things, and you'll you'll see this in other materials as well, as well, is that you need to store one gallon of water per person per day, and that can seem like a lot. Two quarts for drinking and two quarts for food preparation and sanitation, because remember, you'll need to wash your hands, you'll need to go to the restroom, uh, you'll actually need water to, to rehydrate your food, things like that. And the re typical recommendation is to keep at least at least a three day supply of water for each person in your household in your house. And when in doubt, purify. Always great. I and mean, we scouts know this, of course, having a water pur purification system of some sort is I'm sure we all have one, but really important to have at the ready or in your in your go bag or in your disaster kit. Super important. The other thing too that I think is interesting is these these 55 gallon water safe. You if you buy one of these, you do want to make sure it is a water safe or food safe actual barrel. And you can get them. Uh, Walmart used to sell them. You can get them all over the place. So you can look on Amazon. And what's interesting is a lot of them actually come with these little droplets tablets that actually help the water stay pure for about 10 years. So uh, one thing to do too with that with water if you're storing this these are actually super easy they're not expensive to get and you can actually put them in the garage or it or in the basement, somewhere that's going to be accessible to you if there's a disaster and you want to strap them to the wall. Because if there was an earthquake, for instance, you want to make sure those aren't going to roll away, even though they're pretty pretty darn solid, but you wouldn't want it to roll over and then spill all over the place. That would be the worst thing that could happen. So so just another another tip there. But they are they can be super inexpensive. I've seen them anywhere less than $100 per 
per barrel. So it's a pretty neat deal if you can if you can find some. And we'll keep an eye out for that too, because uh, again, Walmart used to sell them. I looked up recently and they don't anymore or they're out of stock. Uh, but anyway, and they were about $70 for this whole setup. It was pretty, pretty good deal. So keep an eye out for that. Another tip of food and supplies, you need, really need to have a minimum of three day supply per person. Now, and these, of course, we know this, right? As scouts, we always have a lot of dehydrated food on hand, it seems like, but having a separate stash of these things is super important. I used to think, oh, I'm prepared, I'm ready to roll, I'm, I'm good to go, but I didn't have it separated. So having a separate stash is really, really, uh, really important, I think. Uh, let's see, the other thing is, obviously we don't, we wanna make sure we don't have to have refrigeration for this. We need to have enough water to make it, uh, to rehydrate the food and having those heating and cooking supplies. I mean, it could be an Ada spatula or whatever it is, having spoons and you know, things like that, having a spork, really important to have wherever the food is at. And not to forget your pets, they need to eat as well, right? So we wanna remember, remember that and having that supply. So whether it's three days, two weeks, a month supply, uh, we have a month supply for our family actually. So month supply of food and water, uh, and if I feel prepared, so that's a really good thing to know. And and it wasn't going crazy with uh, too much material, uh, too much storage, uh, too much uh, too much water. It just feels just right. So that's what we've done. So some other resources here. Like I said, at cpcbsa.org slash webinars, you can get all of our past webinars and we will post this as well in the, in the next 24 hours, the recording of this, as well as some resources. Like I mentioned, Melissa has this amazing resource. It's like more than 50 pages, a whole guide on, on emergency preparedness. It's fantastic. You can also go to ready.gov. There's lots of graphics, lots of materials there. And these, for those of you who are working on emergency preparedness merit badge, some great, great resources here. And again, Melissa's resource is fantastic as well for this. So as you start having these conversations with your scouts and with your family, this is a great merit badge to get rolling on, of course, but also for Cub Scouts and really any family out there who's listening, super important uh, to, to be prepared. And so this is just a great way to do it. Now, here's, here's another fun thing, another fun fact. You may not have known this. Next Adventure actually gives 10% off. I tried it myself just days ago. They give you 10% off uh, for if you're in Scouts. Uh, they might quiz you on if you're a scout or not. You might have to uh, mention the scout oath or law or things like that. So, or the outdoor code, be prepared. I told them, this is how you really test a scout is the outdoor code. So anyway, uh, because a lot of us don't seem to know it, I think, at least in my unit, we're practicing. Anyway, so you get 10% off there. Also, if you go to smile.amazon.com and designate the CPC as your, um, as your nonprofit of choice, what's awesome is it supports the CPC, which is super, super awesome. And of course, everybody shops at Amazon, right? The other thing I want you to know about is that the Scout Shop has a whole bunch of gear on sale through January 17th. So you can stop on by go to cpcbsa.org slash scout shop. And you can, uh, you can get all of the, the contact information there are hours and things like that. Cause there's a great, great sale for, for gear going on there. So let's see, do we have, does anybody have any questions? I'm just going to dive into that real quick here. Anybody here? Let's see. Uh, we have some folks saying on Facebook, they're going to watch this later. That's super, super awesome and share it with their kiddos. Again, this is, boy, I think there's just such a this is such a great time to talk about this. And, and it's a really, it's fantastic for little kids, for older scouts, really for the entire family. And you know, your extended family too. I find a lot of people just aren't prepared and your neighbors, the more prepared you are and your neighbors are the safer you'll all be. And so let's see here. So let's see, somebody asked, um, does this course here qualify for the emergency preparedness BSA pin? Uh, not necessarily. There are some requirements that will be fulfilled through doing this. Uh, so check it out. You'll have to, you have to coordinate a little bit, but we're covering a lot. A lot of this stuff that Melissa talks about covers, boy, so many things. We actually have talked about some safety merit badge uh, requirements as well as emergency preparedness and first aid. I mean, look, really look at those three opportunities. Everything is in your merit badge book uh, as well as some of the resources that Melissa has there. So um, anyway, let's see. Any other questions? Let me check Facebook here. It doesn't look like it. I think that's about it. Oh, somebody mentioned vet wrap is a great, is great to hold uh, those pads in place. I don't really know what vet, vet wrap is, but it sounds great. Uh, they're also some really interesting materials out there. Um, 
that uh, that soak up soak up um, that clot blood and things like that. Some just new fascinating materials out there. So check those out when you go to Next Adventure or whatnot. Some really interesting interesting choices out there and splints and things like that. Just new technology that you know we didn't have when I was a kid. So really great stuff. Let me go here and say. Um, Oh, here's a question. What does everyone keep their emergency kit in? Spread it into backpacks, put it into storage bins, and where do we keep the emergency kit? That is great. Uh, I've heard a variety of things. So Melissa mentioned the go bag. Having that as an actual backpack, I tell you what, I, I tell people this all the time. I think it's super important to have a go bag in a backpack whenever you're going on a trip that goes with you. If you're going to the coast, that goes with you. You always have the emergency gear. I know we scouts are, are prepared all of the time, but having this backpack in place or, or a sport bag, something that you can just throw over your shoulder and can be in the front closet that you can just pull out and take with you wherever you go. If you're going anywhere 30 miles out of town or whatnot, you just throw that in the back of the car as well. So if you're going to the mountains, going to the coast, you always have the right supplies. And here's another thing uh, that Melissa and I talked about, and I've heard this from a variety of people too, is that what you do with this go bag, you as the adult, you check through it in terms of, you know, if you need to replace the food and things like that. But this is a, we don't touch this. This is an off limits bag. If, you, if you're throwing candy bars in there or, or power bars or whatever it is, uh, some, things, some tasty goods like a hard candies, so you don't want anybody playing with that or touching it or whatever, or even saying, oh, I'll just borrow the pocket knife from the go bag. The go bag should stay in the closet on its own and the whole family knows it's there. It's for emergency purposes only and we take it wherever we go. So we've heard of that for, for the backpack. Now the um, Melissa actually, and we didn't show this at her house. So they've really got their garage dialed in because she does a lot of training about this where everything is in bins. And so they have their toilet paper in bins. They have their cleaning supplies in bins. They have all of these little bins set up on a separate rack that actually is in the middle of the garage. It keeps it all safe and secure. And it's sort of, this is the untouchable area. This is where we store everything for emergencies. So I think that's a really great point. I uh, guess yeah, somebody Lee just mentioned a go bag and a backpack and the rest emergency kit in a hurricane box. Awesome, awesome point. And, uh, and also another tip too, for those of you who have basements, something to think about is, are you going to be able to access this material in an emergency. I think it's a super good thing to think about depending on your household, depending on your setup. Will you be able to get at it if you know if a ceiling caves in or there or things fall on the on the ground or you're not able to access the door, making sure that you have access, just being aware of that, making sure you always have access to to that gear, I think is is super important as well. Let me just check Facebook one more time and see if we had some more. We did have a few more comments here. Yep, somebody mentioned the Emergency Preparedness Award pin. Awesome. We'll put a link to that on the webinar, on the, on the, um, uh, on the blog post at cpcbsa.org slash webinars as well. And should I have first aid to participate? Okay, actually, really good point. First aid merit badge is the requirement for, you know, for really it's the first merit badge that all scouts should earn. So really, really important. I find emergency preparedness is really fun. I really enjoy it. But first aid, and it's something to keep fresh on is first aid. So constantly revisiting that. If you're in a scout unit, it's great to actually revisit it with the younger scouts. It's, a, you know, making habit of it, sort of like knots. As a matter of fact, we have our knots right here. We were practicing our knots last night with our scout unit. So that's one thing we're working on. Even virtually, we can work on knots. So we're working on that. Anyway, I think that's about it. Any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Everybody had such great, great tips. We'll compile all this. We'll put this on cpcbsa.org slash webinars. And uh, so you'll have that all there. We'll send an email out as well. A couple of upcoming webinars are our introduction to leadership skills for troops. So this is, it's called ILST, and it's actually a great, great training program for, for you leaders to teach the scouts how to become leaders. Some really great material there. Also, our last web, our plan of attack right now, just so you all know, is that the last webinar of the month will be summer camp updates. So we'll have the latest and greatest. You know, it all feels like so much of it is in flux. We are planning on doing summer camp. We have lots of safety and contingency plans in place. The team has actually six different contingency plans in place. I think it's five or six 
pretty amazing. And so they are prepared and it's just so great. Let alone, like we mentioned before, we have new wash stations. We have new uh, flushing outhouses. Yes, they are flushing Kaibos for those of you who use the word Kaibo. Uh, and so really fantastic. New wash stations, new shower houses. So it is cleaner. It's more fantastic than ever before. So, and our goal is creating world-class summer camps. So uh, let's see. Oh, somebody mentioned actually first aid is required for this merit badge. But as you mentioned, we can start practice, practice, practice. Yes. So if you're doing the merit badge, yes, do first aid first. And let's see here. Any other tips? Great. Awesome. So join us for the, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And I hope you'll join us for the next one, especially uh, this leadership one coming up here is going to be fantastic. Again, summer camp updates. We'll do that at the last webinar of the month. Our Wednesday webinars are at noon every single Wednesday. So, uh, so keep up to date there. And, and also just remember that you can, oh, hey, if someone's from Raleigh, North Carolina is saying hi, hi. And uh, just to keep up to date for those of you in the CPC, we do have our little news updates at the beginning of these. So you can even just tune in and tell adults, tell the other adults too. Just go to the slash webinars, cpcbsa.org slash webinars, and just listen to the first few minutes. You'll get your deadlines and all that kind of stuff. So just remember that. Anyway, enough of my talking, my babbling. Thank you all so much for, for joining us today. I really Really, really appreciate it. It's been awesome to see you all here. Have a fantastic New Year's. And uh, we just, uh, we're just so grateful that you're here to, to join us today. And uh, again, join us every week, Wednesdays at noon for awesome Wednesday webinars. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.